Hello everyone, it's DuckFellino7. Today I'm playing Dimir Footbrew. I'm really excited about this one. I got the file in a first try with this build, but it felt just super good. Entire time, uh, all the new cards felt uh, perfect. I'm playing Kappa Cannoneer for the first time and uh, it's like I was waiting for Basim to come out because this card fits in perfectly in this archetype. It's like it's among Kappa and Basim and Tamiya, all the new cards are like the best cards in this archetype, definitely, in addition to Asma, of course, which is kind of the point uh, of the archetype, but all the new cards fit in perfectly. Kappa Karnier is much better than uh, Tot Not Seer that used to be played in its decks similar to this long, long ago. It really is, it's much better, you can play it much earlier and... Uh, uh, cookbook plus uh, food tokens are really the perfect enablers for it. Okay, so uh, Basim works great with Misha Bubble, Moxember, and so does Tamio. So there's a whole lot of great synergy here. Since I uh, brewed it for the first time, it kind of immediately felt uh, perfect. I don't want to change a single card. Everything uh, about it just kind of feels like. Um, uh, perfect fit and uh, kind of it looks pretty too okay so really like the looks of this art of tamio basim kappa cannoneer and okay so uh other than that uh we got tamio working great with misha bubble plus a street rate street rate also works great with asmo enabling you to play asmo on turn one bubble mox Amber, both work great with tamio as with basim it enables you to draw a card when you cast this on turn two for zero mana also, uh, the draw a card uh, happens uh, on cast, so there is no way to prevent the value you're getting with Basim. It's a really, it's really good. Metallic Rebuke in this build takes, let's say, the three mana slot. But this card works great with Tamio. When you play Tamio on turn one, attack with it, you get the clue, and you're now able to just play the Rebuke on turn two without casting any other card. So it can be really relevant. Same thing is uh, true for Misha Bubble or Mox Ember. You can just play it. It can it can act as a mana to cast Rebuke if, even without the legendary creatures. But there is enough legendary creatures uh, in this build uh, that Moxember is doing really, really good. And uh, it's uh, if nothing else, it's just uh, another uh, zero mana uh, artifact that enables Asim and a lot of legendaries in this build. Also pays mana for Improvise, for Rebuke, for Kappa Cannoneer, even if you don't have a legend. So yeah, I think it's just really, really, really good. But I want like uh, definitely three of those and I don't want more. Often I uh, sometimes I trim the third one in the post board games where I really need slots. And uh, that's it. Okay, so I'm really kind of sad I didn't uh, find uh, spots to include like one or two ledger shredders. Uh, they also work well with all these zero mana spells and the old chase daredevil. But I feel like all other inclusions are uh, more important uh, at the moment at least. Okay, so a lot of people asking me already why I have no Emery. I think Tamio is a better fit in this build. It fits the curve better. It, uh, Emery is always weird with Rebuke. I really wanted the Rebuke in this build. Tamio is so much better with Rebuke and Emery kind of fights with Rebuke uh, for that slot. It's too much to play like similar 3 mana costed cards. There is not enough enablers in a deck like this to play this and have some consistency with it. So. I don't think you can play this many rebukes if you want to play Emery and uh, Tamio as I said already work uh, much better with rebuke I think rebuke is card I want in main here to deal with all uh, the problematic uh, decks it really has been excellent and it's been easy to sideboard uh, into when you uh, when you don't need rebuke in those games mostly uh, these are the games that Toxic Deluge and uh, Fatal Push comes in and when you're fighting against combo then Rebuke stays in and you add two Force of Negation. Uh, these uh, f six cards really help you do well against those uh, non-creature decks but uh, also you have like Nihil Spell Bombs, Damping Spheres in addition to Counter Magic to fight that type of decks and I've been very very happy so far with the main board and the sideboard of course, for now, this is my uh, choice. Uh, uh, I think it's. 
I really like every card in the 75 for the current uh, meta game. We will see uh, what will happen in the future. But that's it for now. Okay, so let's now check out the gameplay. Okay, also another a lot of people ask me about why three saga. Uh, three saga is because the mana base is pretty tight. We got only 20 lands here and I really wanted to play uh, Havar Might on the side. That's why we need uh, two green sources and I wanted a minimum of eight fetches. I feel like that's a minimum for consistency of getting the basics and yeah. So uh, rest of uh, the lands uh, are filled with uh, Votary Graves. There's just a two Votary Graves. We can't play less than that. And I can uh, pos I can play just a single survey land, but survey lands are just really really good. Uh, so often you just play uh, uh, fetch into them, and uh, they're kind of like a card draw. And I really like having two of those and two basics. And um, the last land is Otavara. Otavara could Otavara or possibly second survey, of course, could be Urza Saga. But we are playing Basim which uh, has blue and black in its mana cost and we always, when we have it, we want to play it on turn 2 so um, I don't want to play Saga until turn 3 when I have it and I think that makes me uh, want to trim uh, a bit on Saga uh, so st having 3 Saga is still uh, great, uh, still uh, consistent but it kind of uh, helps you have a little better mana base to um, more often cast a Basim on turn 2 and start drawing those cards and of course we got uh, 3 Misha Bubbles and we got 4 Street Raids that is why I'm only playing 20 lands because this card help a kind of card flow and help you get to the lands or the relevant spells you need and so on okay so that is it let's now check out the gameplay okay so I played a um, lot of common matchups. Mm, okay, so uh, the first game I was playing against, uh, I think, Boros Energy. And I surveil a uh, cookbook on top. I definitely want a cookbook. So now I'm able to play Basim. I can play uh, Mox Amber, and uh, depending on my draw, I can decide to play cookbook immediately or later. Opponent uh, bolts Basim immediately. Uh, so yeah, I can't play cookbook now, but it's all good. I find Daredevil, which is a great draw right now. Okay, so I can play Basim, then I can uh, trigger it with a cookbook. Start making, um, start making those. <clears throat> draw a card. Start making uh, the food tokens. So I'm hoping to play Kappa Cannoneer next turn, and that is only like a turn four and uh, my opponent already used uh, two of removal so now i can uh, make another food cast the kappa cannoneer i'm left with one mana but i play another moxember this way i grow the kappa and i'm able to hold the metallic rebuke okay my opponent played the amulet they only have two cards left and I, they have two energy already so this may get them some relevant cards, so I decide to let them connect with Dragoan and just uh, counter that spell. Opponent uh, puts Gigante to hand and uh, passes the turn. I draw a perfect card for a turn, which makes my opponent concede immediately. Also grows my Kappa Kroneer to 10-10 uh, for this turn, 9-9, nine, nine, sorry, which means uh, I can kill two of their creatures and I have a certain... Uh, the sweet thing with the cookbook and the Kappa Cannoneer, you always get the artifact triggers, so you really grow it fast and you're just uh, you're just making sure it will be unblockable always and it's a pretty pretty huge uh, um, uh, threat for this build and it often feels like the Merc Tide of this deck or maybe like a better Merc Tide of this deck with uh, Ward 4, it's just unkillable, it's always unblockable it's really really amazing uh, in the build like this okay so uh, let's check out game 2 and also let's check out the sideboarding plan uh, so my opponent's deck is pretty aggressive and I think I want to remove two street rates against uh, such a uh, aggressive deck also to fit uh, I want all the rebukes out I prefer having 
um, removal in this matchup and that uh, makes that clean swap I was talking about in the beginning just just a removal for the rebukes and I also removed one Tamiyo, two street raids for uh, other relevant cards okay so here I play uh, the Moxember I play the Asmo and now I'm able to get another cookbook and I have a blocker for these uh, guides of souls so uh, that's it let's check out what is opponent doing opponent uh, plays a flage that is pretty cool but what are they going to kill if they kill either of these um, <laughs> they have to kill both because both of these cards are doing a great great job unfortunately in this build I don't have any historic spells I can play on my opponent's turn but still Basim does so much value it's really amazing and it's really a card you have to kill if you don't kill it if it stays on the field for a couple of turns it will definitely just uh, win you the game there are a lot of uh, lot of relevant mm. okay so my, uh, I play uh, Tamiyo I play Kappa Cannoneer and I fetch for watery grave this means I can get uh, this means I can get um, mm, large large construct token and then get the shadow spear my opponent attacks for six I can jump with Tamiyo if I want but there's no need opponent is tapped out and I make a really huge uh, construct here I go for the shadow spear and um, grow my uh, kappa cannoneer triggering it with uh over chase daredevil and the cookbook then i play the asmo play another cookbook uh, create a bunch of these uh, food tokens and uh, i can kill the giganta to go through with everything so that is the lethal yeah and that is the match one let's check out match two okay so in the match two again i was playing against uh, boros energy but uh, this time it's a slightly different version my opponent is playing um, kind of uh, soul, sis soul sisters version with some life gain uh, payoffs okay so i start with the survey land again then uh, go for the bus sim and play the mox ember uh, draw a card the display feels so good as you can see here opponent is immediately forced to go for the bus sim but yeah i can't play the cookbook but i can go for turn two bus sim into draw uh, cookbook draw another card and i have a third bus sim in hand in case my opponent kills this one it's just a nightmare to deal with you kill one there is another one and it just keeps drawing cards every turn for zero mana investment zero life paid you don't have to do anything just play the spells you would normally play anyway okay so i didn't play the cookbook this turn just a uh, kappa cannoneer maybe i should have played the cookbook first okay but opponent uh, plays some creatures they can't really attack uh, with it uh, and uh, yeah my both of my creatures are unblockable now when I play, uh, when I play, yeah, both are unblockable and that is a lot of damage. 10, 11 damage here. Also, I play a Kappa, another Kappa Cannoneer, uh, which uh, I can use to stay in block and then uh, trigger the cookbook again. An opponent just concedes. This is way, way too much. Let's check out game two. Okay, so I... Mm, I mulligan the one lander and I keep one lander too, but with a Misha bubble and the Nihil spell bomb, which allow me to uh, pseudo scry and draw a card with spell bomb if needed. Okay, so I go for the Undercity sewers here, graveyard the Tamiyo, and pass the turn, hoping to get a land. But I didn't get it, so my uh, one lander keep didn't really uh, pay off. Uh, I'm still okay, but they have double Ocelot Pride, which is very very powerful. I get the I get the land here. 
but I don't have a way to uh, play my Asma. This is why you have to be careful with um, sideboarding out too many street raids. Yeah, I I think I'm a kind of my consensus after playing a league is I think I should always keep like a three street raid except when I'm playing against burn then I'm just um, happy not playing any but uh, yeah maybe two is sometimes off okay but I would mostly like to keep three post board okay uh, it's it's just ridiculous what did this uh, ocelot prides do this game i never seen the ocelot pride go as crazy as uh, here it's uh, yeah it's really amazing and uh, but they done it turn three swarm the board with like 30 power that's pretty cool okay so that was game two let's check out game three okay so again uh mulligan the one lander and here keep uh I think this is a decent land for a full deck. You have a cookbook there devil combo in your head in your hand which allows me to cast the cannoneer on turn 3 without drawing uh, anything else. So uh, yeah, I just continue making my food. I will have plenty of food in case at any point if I draw the Asmo I will be able to just uh, completely demolish uh, their uh, entire board. Okay, so here I go for the survey land, I graveyard the Tamiyo, I don't want Tamiyo at this point, I don't have any good enablers for it, so right now uh, this is uh, pretty good for me because I'm just able to cast the Kappa here on turn 3 and that is very strong play, especially since I started first and now my opponent has no way to kill it, they have to wait until turn 5 to attempt a kill and yeah so by then uh, this uh, this guy is going to go in for a lot of damage uh, unfortunately Tamiyo dies Tamiyo kind of enables my uh, unblockable on uh, Kappa and I was struggling on getting uh, some uh, piece relevant piece here since my opponent killed the cookbook I needed another land uh, land enables me to play the Otavara Okay, so I needed another land to go for the Otavara and uh, cookbook is uh, cookbook is probably the best uh, option right now and I, I was able to play the Asmo and kill the Flage, attack, uh, grow my uh, Kappa on 499 and kill their creatures. Here opponent uh, tries to kill the flage, try to kill, uh, gain 5 life here to survive next turn I kill Guile of Souls and that is enough for the lethal next turn so that is the match ok so let's check out uh, match 3 it always feels so good to brew a list and then go to the league with it and just immediately trophy that always like feels uh, very nice Okay, so here I keep a kind of a pretty medium uh, hand. I have Tamiyo, uh, which is decent. If opponent uh, can kill it, I'll definitely be able to draw some cards with it. But we are playing against uh, blue red, which means they probably have a lot of lot of ways to do it. Actually, if uh, they were not able to kill Tamiyo, I would be able to just crack a clue and cycle street play rate. Uh, flip the Tamiyo and that would be so amazing okay I did not expect this it's just main board for Harbinger of the Seas definitely did not expect this and I did not fetch for um, Black Source even if I did uh, uh, my opponent played also played Spreading Seas and uh, yeah other than that they had the efficient removal the Ragavans expressive iterations uh, all the blue red stuff but with four harbinger of the seas and that can be pretty hard for a deck that plays just a single swamp in the deck and Urza Saga but I was able to uh, deal with it somehow okay so I did not concede this one I stayed in the game although I have no ways to play Asmo and to actually kill the harbinger but uh, I stayed 
in in case I just randomly draw a swamp from my deck opponent hard cards uh, the Lorien revealed the draws three I gain some life with my uh, food tokens and yeah okay so slim slim chances I try to go for another uh, top deck and yeah, the top deck is uh, pretty good I make uh, some food tokens here and I draw into Kappa Cannoneer and uh, yeah okay so I uh, I cast the Kappa here and then uh, was really really hoping to resolve this this would completely change the course of the game but yeah now I put it on top but I know they have Ragavan and that's basically it uh, killed my hope but uh, yeah we have two more games let's see how that went for this matchup uh, kind of uh, land hate matchup that is definitely uh, not the easiest for a deck like this Okay, so I play Tamiyo on turn 1, I have Street Raid, uh, this means I can flip Tamiyo on turn 2, which is pretty cool, pretty good, and can win, uh, the, just win the match in a surprising amount of uh, occasions. Okay, so here I make a clue token, I go get that Swamp, but uh, we know opponent is playing uh, Spreading Seas, so that doesn't mean much. And here is a third Kappa Cannoneer. I don't need so many Kappa Cannoneers at this point, but it's okay. I have uh, my uh, Undercity Sewers, I have Urza Saga. Opponent immediately casts Spreading Seas on Swamp. And that is definitely a problem, but I'm uh, just happy the, my Urza Saga is still alive. Uh, let's see if it uh, survives, not really opponent kills it immediately. Okay, so I go for a survey land and just pass the turn. Tamio is on 8 now. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, I tried to... didn't really think... didn't even think about this a lot, but... That was definitely... Uh, did not count on that. And um, yeah, I would try to ulti Tamiyo, but they just tight bounded it, and this was a big loss for me. And they could now just uh, kill it. But the good news is that uh, I have Mishra Bubble on top, and this means I can cast Kappa Cannoneer next turn, and I can also cast Kappa Cannoneer turn after that, and the turn after that. So that uh, is a lot of good news, and a really easy way to win this match. So I cast my first Kappa Cannoneer, it's already a 5-5, so my opponent needs something like a Flame of Aener plus additional uh, three, uh, 4 mana to try to kill the Kappa. Okay, so I cast my second uh, Kappa and now this guy is unblockable and I go in for 6 and I actually have lethal next turn. Just I can just attack with two kappas that are unblockable. If I just draw, um, if I just resolve an artifact, but my opponent has a sink into stupor to prolong uh, the game for a turn. I decided not to attack with anything, just stay back. I'm on 12 life, and the opponent plays a Lorien revealed, draws three, passes the turn. Okay, so I go for the Urza Saga. Try to resolve the Kappa again. Opponent has a counter spell, and I try to cycle the street rate and to see if I'll draw a, uh, any one or zero mana artifacts. It didn't happen, so I had to wait for another turn. Just a couple of uh, uncastable daredevils, and opponent uh, also casts a Harbinger of the Seas. Uh, I decide to crack bubble. Uh, lose two, but uh, just try to uh, try to draw that artifact that just immediately wins me this game. I also draw uh, the Met metallic rebuke uh, to secure the win. So that is it. A very hard game too, but I was able to get there with uh, three Kappa Cannoneers. Let's check out uh, game three. Okay, so definitely Kappa is a big deal. In this matchup, okay, so game 3 I was playing second and I actually kept a one lander. But I had a street rate in hand and potentially 
and not hand with uh, flipping on Tami on turn two if I draw a land among the top three cards of my library. Okay, so I go for the Tami attack, I get the clue token, and uh, I try to cycle a street trade hoping to hit that land, but I fail to do it. Try to uh, cast the cookbook here, but opponent has a pierce. Okay, so uh, I'm still good if I can just uh, draw land uh, next turn. Opponent has Harbinger again, which really, really makes uh, things uh, harder. Okay, so uh, still attacking. I have a rebuke, uh, so I can just uh, crack the bubble. I can just crack the bubble and uh, still uh, hold the rebuke for their turn in case they try to go. For anything, I think expressive iteration is good target for my rebuke, but opponent also has spell pierce, so they were able to resolve that. Okay, so I draw a card from the bubble, hoping to finally hit that land, and I hit the two lands, and one of them is basic swamp. That is even better news. Okay, so I have uh, multiple options here, but I decide I. Uh, just want to flip my Tamiyo next uh, this turn and the next turn I can go play the Swamp, uh, play the Basim and play the Tamiyo, trigger the Basim, protect my Tamiyo flipped Planeswalker and I think that is a good strategy for this game. I can also just play Basim and hold uh, a Metallic Rebuke that is also pretty good. Okay so but I decide to go with third option Third option was just uh, uh, was just holding the rebuke and playing a uh, Tamio. Okay, opponent uh, cracks the stone brain, taking my Kappa Cannoneers. Uh, that is fine. I was not able to rebuke this, but uh, yeah, my uh, Tamio is going uh, down on four. Uh, still, I'm two uh, turns away from actually uh, ulting it. So pretty good uh, position here. I crack the clue end of turn and uh, I play the Urza Saga just to trigger the uh, Fatal Push uh, Raid ability, Revolt ability, sorry, to kill the Harbinger and uh, now I again pass the turn just holding the Rebuke again for their turn. Okay, opponent goes for the Spreading Seas, again takes my Swamp but uh, I, I still uh, have Undercity Sewers right now, they don't have Harbinger. And my Tamio is on 8 now, there's no need to hurry anywhere. Okay, so I play the Asmo with my black mana, I get the cookbook, uh, surveil, uh, put a land from the top into the graveyard, resolve the cookbook, uh, uh, start making food tokens and pass the turn, still holding the rebuke uh, for their turn. Okay, so my opponent uh, just plays the land, passes the turn. It's a great, great position right now. I have Metallic Rebuke here to try to counter um, something they had. And uh, since they last time they countered my Tamiyo ability, I really wanted to use Tamiyo only if they tap out uh, so I can protect it with the Rebuke. And I only done this after they... Uh, countered my Basim. Okay, so I played, uh, now I draw 20 cards from my library and they have zero in hand and the win is just guaranteed. So, um, easy game from now on and opponent actually stayed in the game for a few more turns but uh, I have to kill it, I don't have that uh, fast a quick uh, clock except for the uh, cannoneers but uh, yeah i didn't actually get the cannoneers in my hand bunch of lands uh, rebuke uh, and uh, that's basically it but i have all i need on the field basim and asmo uh, plus couple of rebukes in hand so that is guaranteed game and opponent uh, concedes uh, that is the match actually okay so let's check out uh, match number four okay so this is actually 
pretty sweet because this match includes a turn one flipping Damio, which is crazy. I love when this happens. Okay, so Damio on turn one. I play also played the Mox Ember, and I actually wanted to. I actually wanted to uh, to cast another Tamio, but some bug happened and uh, it skipped uh, my main phase to the combat phase so I lost the mana I uh, was hoping to use to cast the Tamio but it didn't really matter maybe it was even better because now I had a play where I could just uh, go for the Basim play the Tamio trigger the Basim but they countered the Basim so that did not uh, happen but uh, my Tamio is on eight counters on turn three and um, there is no point in playing anything right now i just need to protect my tamio for a turn and that is it countering the orcish bowmaster does it and there is just uh, no way at this point for my opponent to prevent me from ulting the tamio and they know that and they concede so that is the game let's check out uh, game two and the sideboarding plan for this matchup okay so I go uh, trim one street rate get a couple of pushes in uh, one rebuke also goes out and one Tamiyo uh, plus, uh, plus a couple of uh, mox uh, embers mm, okay so uh, I wanted to bring in uh, mites and uh, for this game too I wasn't sure if uh, they're playing a Tamiyo control with the ring or not but there's no much harm in just getting the mites in but I think I removed the mite for game 3 uh, I felt like they're not playing uh, the one ring after game 2 or something like that okay so again kind of stuck on lands here I just play the cookbook uh, play the haywire mite and uh, pass the turn Okay, opponent uh, finds their land uh, before me, kills the Haver Might, which kind of tells me that they maybe do play something uh, that is Haver Might relevant against. Okay, so again, uh, unfortunately, Urza Saga really would like another land at this point, but um, it works, it works. I still. Um, I decided to discard one of the bus seams to get uh, the food token so I can maybe cast my Kappa Carnier sooner and I was still able to go for the rebuke. Now I didn't find that land again and I was kind of scared of them countering my Asma, really a card I want to resolve at this point. So I decide just to hold the rebuke again and the fatal push maybe if they try to flip the Tamiyo or whatever. Okay, so nothing really happened here. Uh, turn, uh, second main phase, opponent tries to hard cast the frog. I decide to counter the frog because I still kind of want to push the, this Tamiyo. Okay, so I cycle the street rate, I get the breeding pool. As my green source, I go for the Basim. I play the Asmo, triggering the Basim. Again, opponent decides to kill the Basim and um, actually also subtlety is my Asmo, but I think that is totally fine. Uh, I mean, I have Asmo on top again, and they really have to counter that card. That count uh, at this point with the cookbook, uh, their devil in hand. Uh, Asmo is too powerful and they have to counter it which means I will get to resolve the Kappa Carnier which is also just another card that immediately uh, wins this game when resolved. Okay so I go for the Asmo naturally if opponent has counter spell they will definitely use it and now I go for the uh, Carnier they only have one mana there is no way they can counter this anyway they can't also kill it it's a six mana a ward four creature there's just no way uh, but they do have a merktide regent unfortunately for my opponent um, kappa Canonier is um, faster than a merktide in this deck so this is a t with a two canoniers this is a two turn clock i also decide to uh, kill their tamio 
and uh, attack for 7 next turn with the cookbook ability I'm attacking for lethal damage and my opponent uh, concedes uh, that is the game and the match okay so let's check out uh, match number 5 last match of this league for the trophy okay so uh, this is this can turn out to be pretty pretty crazy okay so i need a blue source if i get a blue source i'm able to just uh, play the basim on turn two play the moxember uh, trigger the basim cast the tamio that is just an amazing uh, turn two uh, but my opponent was playing um, Living End and I did not get the land I wanted. Okay, I did get it a turn after that. Uh, I was able to play, actually play the Basim, but my opponent also has Subtlety and they go for the Living End on their next turn and I just immediately concede that. So, uh, sorry, not next turn, but they took another turn, which was even better. Uh, okay, so I did actually find Metallic Tribute to counter their first Living End but they had a second uh, one in hand and I really needed some kind of amazing draws to get out of this one. I was still in the game, I countered this uh, first Living End, they also just uh, removed another Arden Plea from their hand with a subtlety, so they already uh, used two Cascade spells and I was able to play Basim, play the Tamio and uh, draw a card but opponent finds another Shardless Agent and then I concede so that is the match Living and kind of rising again uh, in the MH3 meta okay so uh, I keep um, okay hand nothing special but I had Nihil Spellbomb and uh, Basim and there are a lot of draws that enable Basim help me uh, draw more cards draw into stuff that uh, Can win me the game here. Also the sideboarding plan is pretty simple. I want Nihil spell bombs I want force of negations and for those cards. I just remove uh, like uh, Mox embers um, Kappa Cannoneers and there's, I think, in game 3 when I was on the draw, I also included a couple of Toxic Deluge. This gives me a chance if I'm too slow uh, on the draw and they resolve the Living End, I have a chance to just play the Toxic Deluge and make them have it again. I think I included that in game 3, but in game 2 when I'm playing first, I thought like this is probably enough. I keep a bubble on top. Okay, so I go for the surveil uh, fa uh, first, put a cannoneer in my hand, draw into the street trade. Street trade is another card I can put into the yard. Okay, so I can also go for um, attack with Tamio, try to draw another card. Okay, so. Uh, I cycle the Tamio, flip the Tamio, uh, play the uh, play the Asmo, play the cookbook. This means if they uh, play the uh, if they play the Living End, I can discard some of my cards. As you can see here, I discarded Basim in response, and I cycled the Street Trade. So opponent actually was able to resolve the Living End, but that didn't do much for the opponent, as I still had a Kappa Cannoneer. On my side of the field, which is uh, just wins me the game in uh, two turns with the cookbook on the field, uh, uh, plusing the Tamio here uh, makes their creature smaller when they're attacking. So they go for attack here, but that is not a problem. I decided to jump the biggest one and uh, bounce the other attacker, so they go through for just two damage. And I will be able to make a construct token with Urza Saga to win. I also draw a card uh, with the clue, and here I draw uh, the Morgul knife. But my opponent, Force of Negations, my Shadow Spear, 
to prevent a cannoneer from being unblockable but as i said i have uh, i have urza saga to make a construct token to make him unblockable uh, which wins me the game here also my basim is on a cast trigger becomes unblockable too so there are two kill threats they can get rid of that so that is uh, the game two let's check out game three game three against living end is much harder but uh, i keep uh, nihil spellbomb hand and urza saga so this means they have to deal with uh, Spell bomb from my hand. They also have to deal from uh, the spell bomb, uh, which I'll tutor with Urza Saga. Uh, I have two spell bombs, so I'm fairly confident I'll resolve one. I, so that was the reason why I decided to start with uh, turn one Tamiya. Okay, opponent uh, cycles and uh, passes the turn. I go for the Urza Saga. Uh, play uh, the street rate. And play the double uh, spell bomb. My opponent sees the double spell bomb and uh, I think concedes the game. Yeah, they conceded. That was the match, and that was the entire trophy league uh, with this uh, new and exciting Basim Dimir food. Uh, I Kappa Kappa Basim Tamio. All these new cards are just amazing. In a build like this, I think I also made a good sideboard for a current meta game. I really like it. It was very effective in a lot of games. And uh, yeah, so far we are waiting, hoping for an Adu ban uh, soon. But uh, uh, with Metallic Rebuke, with uh, in the main, with a good clock and a lot of card draw and Asmo, I think this deck can even probably fight that. Uh, there are also Pitting Needles, it's a Urza Saga deck, Pitting Needle can also help, help that matchup. There are Haywire Mites, a lot of stuff there, I think it's definitely playable in any meta. And also Damping Spheres plus Rebukes, Force of Negations can take care of uh, um, Storm decks or other combo decks fairly easily. So I believe this deck has uh, a lot of tools to fight uh, everything that... Uh, happens in the meta and i think it will be a good deck for a time to come so that's it excited for this one and that's all for today for the end friendly reminder to click like uh, click subscribe comment in the video um, tell me uh, your experience uh, your uh, experience playing this deck if you are going to play it uh, if when you if and when you play it uh, tell me how do you feel about Basim in this build? I feel like it's been amazing piece uh, and very important piece in this uh, league uh, we went through. So uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And I'm as I said already, I'm very happy with 75. Um, I would not change anything at the moment, but some options are like adding a second pitting needle, adding a second pick your poison but to do this you have to remove some of the cards from the graveyard and i really like them also but these are some of uh, two options i was looking into so uh, that's it for today again thank you for watching and goodbye